Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and today I want to show you how to solo The Wars of Marcus Aurelius, a solo game by Robert Dulesky that's published by Hollinge Billy Games. So now that we've got everything set up, why don't we give it a quick talk through so that you know what we are doing. So this game is designed to simulate the Marcomannic Wars, which were some of the defining wars of Marcus Aurelius' military career. Uh, we have three tribes here, the Marcomanni, after whom the war is named, the Quadi, and the Yaziges, who are all trying to come down, cross the Danube, and cause a ruckus in the Roman Empire. Our win condition is simple to understand but difficult to achieve. We need to beat all three of these tribes back to their home spaces and defeat them there so that all three tribes are suppressed at the same time. So we need to get the Marcomanni back to their home space, the Quadi back to their home space, and the Yaziges back to their home space and have them all defeated. So even if you defeat a tribe, they can try to do an Oathbreaker check and like come back and try to mess with you. So even if you do suppress one tribe, there's always the possibility that they'll return. So it's actually a kind of difficult balancing act and you have to stay on top of it. Meanwhile, there will be a lot of ways for us to lose. The main way that you end up, there's, there's two primary ways to lose in this game. If the Marcomanni reach Rome, it is an immediate game over. We will not tolerate barbarians in our fine Roman countryside. The other thing that can happen to you is the Imperium track can reach zero, in which case you are usurped, assassinated, and you go down in history as a loser. So your Imperium represents your authority with your army and at home in Rome, and there are a number of things that can happen to cause people to lose confidence in you. For example, if you can't control these barbarian raids, you start losing Imperium points, which accelerates your path towards zero. Off-map conflicts, because we have an entire empire to run, we can't just focus here on the Danube. You know, we have Eastern and Western Empire issues going on as well. Um, Off-map conflicts can also cause you to lose Imperium points because it looks like you don't have your business under control. There are also events in the game that can cause you to lose face, which hopefully we'll come across because some of them are kind of funny, actually. So the game, the other, the other way to lose the game is to run out of time. So the Marcomannic Wars, there were two of them officially, took place between about 170 and 180 AD, which is when Marcus Aurelius died. So if you reach the end of Marcus Aurelius' life without a victory in the Marcomannic Wars, then you lose the game. And to boot, you get succeeded by your delightful son Commodus, but that's another game, I suppose. So we're going to start here in the spring of 170 AD. That is the year of the Battle of Carnuntum, where the Romans had some issues with the Marcomanni, whose King Balamar had made an alliance with the Quadi. So we're in the middle of some trouble, which is why a couple of our legions actually start here in the recovery box. We also have a couple of legions and commanders that may or may not enter the game, depending on how we choose to play our cards. I've started with Marcus Aurelius. So at the beginning of the game during setup, you can choose where to put your leaders and armies. But I've chosen to put Mar uh, Marcus Aurelius here with six legions and his son-in-law slash uh, fellow commander Pompeianus here with four legions. I've decided to ignore the Quadi for now because until the Quadi activate, they can't attack and they're pretty far back. So I am going to try to beat the Marcomanni back home and then deal with these two fronts over here. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't, but that's the strategy I'm gonna try. One other note, I've set up two decks of cards over here. These green ones are the Barbarian cards, the red ones are for the Romans, and I've taken out some of these cards that say Late War on the bottom. We will reshuffle and put those in at 175 if we live that long. On a typical turn, you start with a redeployment phase where you can basically rearrange all of your legions and leaders. However, we already just, we just place them, so we don't need to redeploy right now. Also normally at the beginning of a round, we'll have a barbarian phase, but for this very first phase of this spring of 170, we actually just get to go first, which is nice because it won't be like that in all the future years. So because it's spring, we're gonna have to draw five cards. Um, basically as the, as the war season wears on, you can get fewer and fewer resources. So you start with five cards in the spring, you get three more cards in the summer and one in the winter. And at the end of the winter, you have to discard all of your cards back down to zero, or you can keep one in the meditations spot. It's possible to open up the second one. We'll see if that opportunity presents itself. Additionally, if we're ever beginning a year at max Imperium, we actually get an extra card in the spring. We will see if we ever manage to do that. It's pretty tough to keep your Imperium high in this game. So let's start off by drawing five cards. Three, four, 
five. All right, so we have three action cards, which are just simple. You discard the card to take an action. We're gonna talk through actions in just a moment. We also have cards, however, that you can choose to play for either their actions or for their events. So war atrocities, we have roll 1d6. On a result of two to six, one barbarian army of your choice is demoralized. If you roll a one, you flip all barbarian armies to their bold sides. So right now all the armies are on bold, but if we defeat them or use something like war atrocities, you can actually flip them to a side where their attack value is less because they are demoralized. This can also happen to our good friend Marcus Aurelius, who, if he gets a little sad, goes back down to one from an attack value of three. So keeping a track of morale is important. The other event that we have here is ambush, battle before dice roll. So we, that's when we play it. We played it for battling before an actual die roll. So you can add three to the Roman battle roll. If you win, flip the barbarian army to its demoralized side and retreat it one space. This card can be used in off-map conflicts. So both of these have pretty good actions. So these will definitely just be spent to do other stuff, but the events on these cards are useful. So I have to figure out how I want to deploy them. So these cards have multiple uses. They can be used to battle or to attack. They can be used to advance my marker here on the Imperium track. So if things are looking a little low, I can burn cards to make people at home feel happy. I guess this represents paying them off, you know, bread and circuses and all that. Um, I can add two level one forts to map spaces. So basically I have all these little forts over here and I can put them out on, um, on these spaces in order to fortify those areas. So those things, those forts add to my attack value and they can be used to prevent barbarian movement. So if you decide to remove or take damage to a fort, depending on its level, you can actually keep holding the barbarians back using those defenses. You can also use actions to transfer a leader from one set of legions to another one. So if I feel that we need a bump from Marcus Aurelius somewhere else, or I don't want Marcus Aurelius in a conflict, any of those, we can flip um, leaders around. Um, we can add the upper and lower Danube fleets. So when you do that, it makes it easier to move your legions around during play. So even during a round as opposed to during the redeployment phase. Um, you can transfer up to six legions and a leader to an off-map conflict space. So if this is going on, we can like move guys over here to handle the conflict. Or we can prevent a surge. So when all three of these spaces fill, not only does the Barbarian Tribe in Space 3 activate, but the other two also activate and try to attack you. So if you allow a surge to happen, you have a whole bunch of attacks at once, which can be very upsetting. Um, so you can actually burn a card to prevent a surge from happening at inopportune times. So our first move of this turn is we're going to go ahead and play War Atrocities. So we're going to roll a 1d6. And on a result of 2 to 6, we just rolled a 4. Um, we can demoralize an army of our choice. So we are going to discard this card and we are going to demoralize the Markamani. So now they are down to a attack value of two with their army, which is great because now we're going to battle them. So I'm going to discard an action card in order to battle the Markamani. So I can just leave Marcus Aurelius and his guys down here, but we'll move them up just to make it look dramatic. So I have six legions plus Marcus Aurelius, so six plus three is nine. That is my attack value for this round. The Markamani are in a plus two space and they have a base attack value of two. So it's gonna be four versus nine for the moment. Things are looking pretty good for us. But in order to fully resolve the battle, we have to roll dice. So we're gonna say the blue one is the Markamani and this black one is me, the Romans. So I rolled a four and they rolled a six. However, we're still gonna win that because we were so far ahead. So we, nine and four is 13, uh, four and six is only 10. So the Markamani have lost this battle. They are going to move one back. However, because they rolled this six, they are gonna feel emboldened anyway. Like they felt like they held their own in our conflict. So they're gonna go back over, unfortunately, to their bold side, which is a bummer because that adds two to their battle value. So one thing that's interesting about these die rolls is that not only do they modify the attack values of the armies that we're using, but they have some special conditions. If a barbarian army rolls a six, they become emboldened. 
If they roll a 1, they become demoralized. If I, as the Romans, roll a 6, I will gain an Imperium on my Imperium track if Marcus Aurelius is my army leader. If I roll a 1 and Marcus Aurelius is commanding my army, then I actually lose an Imperium point, because even if I win the battle, there's something I did that kind of lost confidence of people, and now I have to pay the consequences by losing a little bit of authority at home. But that was a successful battle for us, and now I have three more cards to play. So, the question is, do I, with my 9 power, come here and attack the Mark of Mani again? So the answer, of course, is, heck yes, I want to battle again. No guts, no glory. Fortune favors the bold. All of that. So we're going to play another action card. We're going to roll again. This time we are at 9 to 8, so we really need to beat them on a die roll in order to take this conflict. And oh yes! Alright, so we rolled a 6 to their three. So not only do we win, but our buddy Marcus Aurelius gets an Imperium of points, which is fantastic. And now the Marco Mani are further back. They're in their second to last spot on the map. I could battle them again, but I'm actually not going to this time. I am gonna just put my guys back in their little box. And then I'm actually going to use this third action card to place some forts to kind of shore up my authority in this area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this action card down and I'm gonna put out two level one forts. So they have plus one attack. They don't do anything to pacify. Um, pacifying is what happens after you've defeated a, a tribe and you're trying to kind of hold down their area. But I'm gonna place a couple of forts. So the way that forts work, by the way, is that you do have to roll attrition at the end of every turn. So they don't necessarily last forever. You have to make sure that they, you know, you have to roll to make to see if they make it. The other thing you have to think about is you have to keep them in supply. So basically, anything north of the Danube, you start your you start your supply chain here, basically. So I have a fort here and I have a fort here. I can't have a fort here and a fort here because that's skipping a space. That also means that if something bad happens to this fort, then all the ones that are above it also get eliminated because there's no supply chain. But for now, we have two nice little plus one attack forts. So if the Markomani try to come in here and bother us, we have a little bit of extra oomph on our rolls. I really like the action on this card, so I'm actually gonna hang on to this baby until a future round. So I can keep this in my hand for now. Um, and we're gonna draw three more cards when we get to summer, which is what we're gonna do now. So we're gonna advance our round track. We're still in the year 170, and now it's summer. So it is time to have a barbarian turn and see what they've got in store for us. All right, so we're gonna draw three barbarian cards and see what these yahoos have in store for us. So our first card is Yazagaze. So advance Yazagaze forward one space or flip them from demoralized to bold. They're already on the bold side. And then I add this card to the surge pile. So these Yazagaze are gonna come forward one. So I should probably do something about them fairly soon. I don't like how close to costing me some IP they have come. Let's draw another card. Card number two. Uh, Plague. Lose one Imperium point. Dang it. Okay, so we're gonna go down one. At least we got that nice roll earlier. And then we're gonna roll one D6. If I roll one, I have to place two legions from any army or armies of my choice in the recovery box. So two of my guys get sick. Um, on any other roll, I place one legion from any army in the recovery box. So no matter what, I'm gonna lose somebody until next turn. But I rolled a six. So um, the good news is that I don't have to get rid of two. All right, so where do I want to, what do I want to do? I think I'm going to take somebody from Pompeianus just because Marcus Aurelius is busy up here and I'd really like to get the Marcomani under control quickly. So this will go here. And then we are going to do one more Barbarian card and their round will be up. So, ah, the Marcomani, speaking of the devil. So advance the Marcomani forward one space or flip them from demoralized to bold, add this card to the search pile. So we're gonna surge. We're not actually at a surge yet, but these guys are gonna come back up here. So fortunately they're now in a space with a fort, so we're actually gonna plus one to our attack next time we fight them. So that was the Barbarian turn. This is just gonna go in the Barbarian discard pile. But, um we now have two uh, 
cards in the surge pile, so we're gonna have to watch it because we could have all three tribes activate, which is bad. Right now the Quadi are still kind of in a loose truce with us and they can't attack us, but that could change on the draw of a card. So I'm depending on this for a little bit to get some stuff done, but I can't depend on it forever. So I still have this card and I get to draw three more. So four in treaty. Ooh, I can automatically end one off map conflict. I might try to keep this for a future turn because those are a real pain in the rear. Ah, Publius Helius Pertinax. I can pay one IP to add Pertinax to any Danubian army or to an off map conflict without a leader. I can also add both Danube fleet markers. If I play it for the event, I can discard it to the history pile. Ooh, I'd really like to get Pertinax. That's cool. Okay, we'll think about that. Third card, Wexalationes. Transfer any number of Roman leaders and legions between any of the Danubian army boxes. Essentially, this allows you to reorganize your entire military deployment along the Danube without requiring the Danubian fleet. You may not move legions or leaders from the recovery box or transfer legions or leaders to or from off-map conflicts. So I don't really need this card right now. This one's probably going to get played for an event. So, interesting. I want to use a lot of these actions, but I also really need to do stuff with the cards that involves battle. That's rough. All right, so the absolute first thing we are going to do is we are going to play... Publius Helvius Pertinax. So Pertinax is actually kind of an interesting dude in his own right. Uh, I think he's the son of a freedman. So, you know, he comes from these humble origins. He becomes an, ar an uh, army officer who is actually quite successful. And um, actually after Commodus was assassinated, Pertinax was the emperor for like almost three months. But he attempted to reform the Praetorian Guard, and those are the Emperor's personal guard, and they rather enjoyed having a lot of power and freedom. So he got assassinated, and then the Praetorian Guard auctioned off the role of Emperor to the highest bidder, and that guy made it like two months. So it was, it was all a very successful, you know, political turn. But Pertinax is awesome. We are definitely going to pay one Imperium point. We are going to discard this to our history pile, which I'm going to keep off camera. And um, we are going to take Pertinax. We can't put him anywhere that doesn't have an army. Okay, so I just double checked the rules. I can get Pertinax out, but I can't put him with another leader. And you also can't have a leader without an army on the board. You can have an army without a leader, but not a leader without an army. So Pertinax is actually just gonna go into the recovery box until next year. And then when we redeploy our forces next round, he'll get to come out. The other thing that he's gonna do for us that's very cool is he's gonna put out both the upper and lower Danube fleets, which is fantastic. Because what that means is that by paying cards in the middle of rounds, we can completely shift the way that our leaders and armies are deployed. So if something weird happens during one of the rounds, we can actually completely change the way that, um, the way that our forces are arranged in order to handle surprises. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to ambush these pesky Markamani up here. So we're going to play this ambush card. All right, so how this is going to have to work is we're going to play the West Lationes card in order to battle. And now that we're in battle before the die roll, we are going to play ambush. So we're going to add three to the Roman battle roll. If you win, you flip the barbarian army to its demoralized side and you retreat it one space. So we are currently... One, two, three... Yeah, we have six guys with Marcus Aurelius still, and Marcus Aurelius is worth three. Plus, we have a plus one on our fort. All right, I think we're going to hang on just a minute. We're going to play the Wex Lationes, and I think that we can take the Marcomani here. So they're at four plus four, which is eight. But we're coming at them with nine plus one on our fort, which is ten. So I'm going to gamble that we don't have to play an extra card to take them out. So we're going to play Wex Lationes. And let's see what our rolls are. All right, so we got them five to three. So we were already winning and now we have definitely won. And that means that the Markamani have to go back and that we won that battle. So that's good. We're just trying to keep these guys away. If we can beat them two more times as it gets more difficult, that'd be great. It's just that I would like to demoralize them, but I kind of feel like I just, want to hang on to this until it's that plus three is really going to do something for me. Like maybe back up here. 
Okay, so let's see what happens. We are gonna go into the winter. This is a tough time for me because I only get one card. And we could also, we're also probably on the brink of a surge right here. And I have to choose if I'm gonna discard a card or let the surge happen. I really like my cards. So let's draw some barbarian cards. What y'all gonna do? All right, barbarians siege the forts. Okay, so we're gonna roll 1d6 for each fort on the map. If the number is less than terrain rating, the fort takes one hit. So we reduce it from level two to level one, or we remove a level one fort. Ugh. Okay, so the terrain rating here is a two, the terrain rating here is a four. Yikes, okay, so let's roll for our four first. So if I roll a four or higher, we're good. If I roll less than a four, the fort goes away. Ah, we rolled a five, thank goodness. Okay, so that fort made it, but we can't have a low roll here or else we are gonna have a problem. So let's hope that I roll a two or better. All right, we got a four. Okay, so our fort's made it. Whew, this card is gonna go just in the discard pile. Let's see what happens next in this lovely, oh no, Kostobaki. Lose one Imperium point per year until resolved. Oh man. Okay, so we're gonna place this card in the Eastern Empire off-map conflict space. If this space is occupied, then I shuffle this back in. Okay, so we're having problems with the Costa Baki now. So they're gonna go here in the Eastern Empire space. And in order to get rid of this, I would normally have to deploy legions and like defeat the die roll of this card. However, I kept this foreign treaty card, so hopefully I can just play that next round and get rid of it. So actually, historically, these dudes are right on time. I do believe that they came down to the Balkans from in like 170 or 171. Um, so the Romans did drive them back in actual history, but let's see if we can drive them back now. So that was card number two, and now we need to play one more barbarian card. Let's see. Ugh, plague! Okay. So I have to lose another Imperium point. I don't like that. We're gonna have to do something about our Imperium before we get totally screwed over here. Um, and I need to roll one D6. Uh oh, I did roll a one. So I have to place two legions from any armies of my choice in the recovery box. So I'm gonna keep kind of draining Pompeianus over here. So these guys are in the recovery box too. We're gonna get them back next season and we're almost there. It's just, you know, it's annoying. All right, so the plague goes here. And now it is my turn. So the thing that's special about winter, since Romans apparently don't like winter, is I only get one card. Although this is a great card, we'll talk about it in a second. And then all of our battles are minus one during this season. So we have to fight a little harder to get anywhere. That can be kind of tough. All right, but we did this get this card called Battle on the Ice. Um, and so that means I can discard this card to fight and win a battle against the Yazigays and flip them to demoralize during the winter round. That's kind of great because I don't have a lot of legions right here, but I have a card that can let me push these guys back a little bit and demoralize them. So we're definitely going to play paddle, Battle on the Ice for its events and discard it to the history pile. So these guys go back one automatically and we demoralize them. So that's actually really, really nice. I'm also going to go ahead and play Foreign Treaty, so I can automatically end one off-map conflict. If it's played for the event, I can discard it to the history pile. So I am playing it for the event. We are going to end this conflict with the Kostabaki. So both of these actually go into the history pile. And this conflict is over before it can do too much damage to me. But there are more in there, so you know how that goes. And then this Ambush card, I actually really want to keep it. Um, I am going to hang on to it in this meditation space until the next round and then hopefully use it to put the Markamani to bed at last. So now we're going into the housekeeping phase and I'm going to show you how that part works. So now at the end of this year, the first thing we're going to do is check our forts for attrition. So basically I need to roll a die for each fort and if I roll a six, the fort disappears. If I roll less than a six, the fort remains. Um, I'm actually going to check for this fort first because if this one goes, this next one will also disappear because it'll be out of supply. So let's check this first fort. Don't roll a six. Ah, okay, I rolled a two. That worked out. And then let's see if this one makes it. Also a two. Fantastic. So I get to keep my forts. That makes me very happy. Um, if there was a temporary truce marker out, that would be taken away. 
Um, if Marcus Aurelius were demoralized, we'd flip him to bold, but he's still bold. Um, there are no cards in my hand, but if I had any, I would have to discard them now, which means that you may as well just use every card that you have. This one I saved to the meditation space. Um, and then there are no off-map conflicts, but if there were at this time, I would lose an Imperium point, but I'm not looking so hot on Imperium, so let's work on that. Yikes. Um, let's see. If anybody is south of the Danube, I lose points, but that's not happening because they aren't, so we're good there. And then we have to advance the year space. So we're in a new spring, and the year is now 171. And we are going to start again. Although this time we're going to start with a barbarian phase because we got to break that first time, but no more breathers. So before we see what the barbarians have in store for us, we actually get to do some housekeeping, the redeployment step. So all these guys who, these are still out, but everybody who's here in the recovery box gets to come back into the conflict and I can basically rearrange everyone. So... Marcus Aurelius is looking fine here with six, so I'm going to leave him as he is. But I'm going to put Pertinax here as the leader for a raid against the Quadi, since I'm assuming they'll be ready to attack soon. So here's what, what's, here's what we'll do. We will put Pompeianus here with four legions, Pertinax here with two, and then Marcus Aurelius with the full freight. I think that's what we're going to do. So this way we at least have like a plus five going up. It's not amazing, but it could be a lot worse. And we do have this ambush card if we need it for now. So we've redeployed all of our guys. I've just like put, mm, you know what? I don't know what we're going to do with the quaddy. So I'm going to go ahead and put five legions here and just leave one so that Pertinax can be out on the map in case we want to like spend a card and redeploy people. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's about what I want. Okay, so we got our guys out, and now we're going to see what the Barbarians are going to do in their springtime, and then we will get to go. So, Barbarian card number one. Ooh, okay, morale collapses. All demoralized Barbarian armies immediately retreat one space towards their home space. Ignore if they're already in their home space. So, the Yazigays are demoralized, and they're going to move back one space. So, that's kind of nice. Okay. Never stays nice, though. Whoop. Okay, here come the Quadi. So we advance the Quadi forward one space or flip them from demoralized to bold and we add this card <sighs> to the surge pile. Okay, so we're going to surge. And what that means is that the Quadi are going to activate so they can now attack, which means we can attack them too. And then these guys are both going to activate as well. That means that the Markamani move up a space. The Yazigays flip from demoralized to bold. And so now all three Barbarian tribes have activated in the surge. We clear out the surge cards. And then we're going to draw one more for this round. So we have drawn the Yazigays. Okay, so the Yazigays are now going to move back to where I had pushed them back to last time, but now they are bold instead of demoralized. A bummer, but uh, what can you do? Okay, so now it's our turn to draw some cards. Let's see if we get anything good. All right, so let's roll. It's time for a Roman card party. All right, so we already have this card, but because it's the meditation space, we get to draw five more for a total of six cards, which is awesome. So we got Galen. So basically I can ignore a plague if I have this card in my hand. Uh, Rain Miracle. Ooh, nice. Okay, so it's you played in a battle before the dice roll. Um, you automatically win the battle you're fighting, and you gain a plus one Imperium point, which we should probably consider because our Imperium's not looking too hot. Single combat. Ooh. So we can resolve this battle by rolling a D 1d6 for each side. The highest number wins. If we win, we demoralize the Barbarian army, and we get the commander Marcus Valerius Maximianus for free, which would be great because Maximianus is way cool. If we lose the battle, however, uh, we deduct two Imperium points, and that would mean that we would lose the game right now, which is a little bit... Uh, so, I don't know about that. Uh, route. Ooh. Move a defeated army back two spaces instead of one towards their home space and flip them to demoralized. I like that. And then... All right, just, just a generic action card. All right, so this is a pretty nice hand. I definitely want to use these babies for their actions if possible. Ambush is also good. These are definitely getting burned for just 
just to battle or something like that. So let's see what we can do with this. All right, first things first, we are coming at these Markomani because if we can beat them, we can beat them all the way back to their home space and then have them demoralized there. And maybe, just just maybe, we can wrap it up this turn with the Markomani. Let's see what we can pull off. So we are gonna be attacking with a force of 10, so nine for my armies and then one for my fort. And then the Markomani are in a plus four space with a level four base value, so they're gonna be at eight. So it's eight to 10, it's pretty close. We're gonna play the action card to battle them, for sure. And then let's think about whether we wanna play something extra. Hmm. You know what? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it on the die roll and hope that I can pull this off. So let's see. Odds are risky, but hey, you know, no risk, no reward, right? And that worked out. We got a three. They got a one, which demoralizes them. And now that we've done this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and play route, played in battle after a Roman victory. So they move back two spaces instead of one towards their home space and they're demoralized, which is great because the Markamani are now on the ropes. If I can win one more battle against them, we're gonna get this. However, they're in their home space with still a plus two. So they're at a battle level of 10. I'm at a nine right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hope for the best. <laughs> we're gonna play this Gatling card. So we're gonna play this to battle. And then we're gonna use Ambush. So battle before the dice roll is when you play it. We're gonna add three to the Roman battle roll. So by adding three to the roll, we're putting ourselves hopefully a little bit more of an advantage because right now they actually have us 10 to nine. We're fighting an uphill battle here, but we're gonna see if this is gonna be enough to take them out. Please, 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 please. Okay, so let's roll our dice and see what we get. All right, this actually worked out really well because we rolled a five, they rolled a four. Normally that would put us at a tie. So when you tie, you have to re-roll. But because we added three to our battle roll, that actually puts us at eight. So we are at nine plus eight, which is 17. They are at 10 plus four, which is a mere 14. So we have defeated the Markomani for now. So they are a suppressed tribe. We're gonna move them to the surrendered tribes area on the board. So they're not totally gone. There is a possibility that if they activate or if there's a surge that they can try to come back. They will have to roll an Oathbreaker check, but if we can keep enough power in the area, we can stop them from returning. So we'll have to plan that out carefully. But good news, we use this turn to get the Mark of Money off the board. All right, so we're gonna go into the summer and it's time for the barbarians to come at us again. So now we have to worry about the Quadi and the Yazigays. If we can do a little bit of fortification over here, we might be able to have a little more control over this area. So basically, just, just for future reference, when the Markomani do an Oathbreaker check, they're going to roll 1d6. And basically, if my amount of coverage in this region is high enough, they can't manage to, um, to rebel against me. So basically the number of legions I have in the area combined with the number of level two forts that I have in the area is my pacification value. If their die roll can beat the pacification value, then they will rebel. So if I can always keep a level of six pacification in this area, maybe like I could get a level two fort and then keep a few legions here, then the Markomani won't rebel unless I draw a specific card. So now I just need to figure out how many resources I can divert from this area to other areas and what am I willing to risk in terms of Oathbreaker checks so that I can work on the Quadi and the Yazagays. For now, however, we are going to have some cards. Okay, so Barbarians siege the forts. <sighs> Roll 1d6 for each fort on the map. If the number is less than the terrain rating, the fort takes one hit or we remove a fort. So here are the forts on the map. That one's got a terrain value of four, that one's got a terrain value of two. Let's go ahead and roll for this one first since it's um, it'll take the other one out of supply anyway. All right, so for the two one, we rolled a five. We are good on that. But for this one, we need to roll a four or higher. Ah, we rolled a six. Okay, so thank goodness I get to keep my forts. 
one barbarian card out of the way. Barbarian card number two. The Markamani. So they advance forward, except they don't because they've surrendered. However, this does still get added to the surge pile, so it's going to contribute to future attacks from the other barbarians. And here's our third card. The Quadi. All right, so the Quadi are going to come forward one space. We're going to flip from demoralized to bold. And this card does go in the surge pile. So what's going to happen is the Quadi are going to come up. I'm going to go ahead and let them surge. And the Yazigis are going to come up. So everybody's coming my way. The surge, however, is over. And the Barbarians have done their thing for the spring. And now I get to draw three cards and see what happens. So... Action card. Okay, just a generic card. That's cool. I kind of like getting those because they're easier to spend. Um, ooh, auction in the form of the Deified Trajan. So these allow me to get back to Imperium points or draw two new cards. Ooh, it'd be really nice to get some IP right now because I'm a little low. Let's see what we can pull off. Order to retreat after the Roman defeat. I can play the card to avoid losing a Legion. I'll probably spend that for an action. Okay, so we got two cards I definitely want to just go ahead and spin for an action, and then three that are kind of interesting. All right, let's think about it. So, the Yazagis are getting a little close here, but the Quadi are also like, getting pretty aggressive with me, so who do I want to mess with? I feel like the Quadi, if I had a good stretch of battles, could be defeated more quickly, but the Yazagis are so close. All right, so definitely the first thing we're going to do is we're going to play Auction in the form of the Deified Trajan and get me some Imperium points back. This gets discarded to the history pile. But let's, let's move our Imperium back up to a safer spot because that was looking pretty rough. Okay, that's better. So now we got to battle somebody. Hmm. Okay, so I think what we're definitely going to do first... Let's go ahead and push the Quadi back a little bit. Um... Let's do Yeah, okay, that's what we're gonna do. Let's use the rain miracle. So we're gonna use order retreat to do our battle action. We're gonna play the rain miracle for its event. So it says automatically win the battle you're fighting, do not roll and gain plus one Imperium points, Danube front only. Uh, and you can't use it in an enemy home spot, but they're close. So we'll discard this to the history pile and we'll automatically beat the Quadi for something and we will get another Imperium point because I kind of need those in my life. Ooh, okay. So the question is, do I want to hang out on my cards or do I just want to go for broke? I do want to fight the Yazagis. I don't know if I... Well, you know what? I may as well just do it for single combat because like... I mean, my IP is looking a little better, Ooh. Uh, but also, you know, we could get Marcus Valerius makes me honest for free, which would be cool. We can demoralize them and make them back up. Let's try it. So we're going to play this to battle and then we're going to play single combat. You play it in battle before the die roll. So we're going to resolve this battle by rolling 1d6 for each side. Highest number wins. Roman victory. The defeated barbarian army is demoralized and it retreats one space. We gain the leader Marcus Valerius Maximianus for free. Uh, if we lose, we get to deduct two Imperium points, which would really suck. But we're going to risk it because that's part of the fun of a game, right? Let's move my dice tray so everyone can see real good. All right, here's the Barbarians. Here's the Romans. Single combat. Come on. Oh, no. Okay, so we both got one. That means that we're going to have to roll again because our guy is tied. So I'm going to get in the corner. I'm going to spray some water in the mouth. Come on. Come on, Romans. Get together. Yes. All right. So it's six to four. We won. Yes. We got, I don't know, Maximus in there doing our single combat. So what that means is that these guys get demoralized and they back up a space. The other thing that it means is that I get Marcus Valer Valerius Maximianus for free. So this card goes, his, his card is going to go into the history pile. So we'll look through here and find him and then shuffle back up. Where are you? Ah, here he is. Marcus Valer Valerius Maximianus. We'll shuffle. All right, so he's going to go to the history pile. And we are going to get 
Marcus Valerius Maximianus. So Maximianus is a plus two commander. He's a little better than Pertinax. We're going to put him in the recovery box for now because there's nowhere to put him because he'll just fight it out with other guys. And then this goes in the discard. So we have no cards. So hopefully this barbarian round isn't too horrible. But, I mean, we've been making some progress. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. All right, so now it's winter. We're going to move up. I only get to draw one card this round. We won't even see what it is for a second here. Okay, so Barbarian number one. Oh, unrest in Rome. Discard one card from your hand or your meditation holding space. If you do not discard a card, lose two IP. I have no cards, so I guess I'm discarding two IP. Losing two IP. Oh, that sucked. <laughs> All right, next. All right, the Yazigis are going to advance one space or flip from Demoralize to Bold and go in the Surge Pile. Ugh. Okay. And then the Quadi are going to come forward. All that work I did last turn gets undone. What a bummer. So they're, they're now coming and they're going to go in the Surge Pile. But that was three Barbarian cards. Like, all right, we dealt with it. Bummer. What a bummer. Okay. So I can draw my one little card. It's an action card. Yay. Um, I think I'm just going to hang on to it. Um, I don't have to do anything right now. Everything's like okay enough. And I want to rearrange my legions around anyway. Actually, you know what? No, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to discard this card. And I am going to make one of these forts, this one, a level two fort. So that, that way I can start moving more dudes out of this area and into other conflicts. Because Marcus Aurelius is about to move, my commander is about to move around in my next housekeeping phase, and I want to make it so that I can do a lot of damage against these guys. Because our next turn is going to be moving Marcus Aurelius over and having a more powerful leader to kind of kick butt all the way back up to home territory. Yeah, I think that's the best choice I could make right now. Ooh, okay. All right, so now we're gonna go into housekeeping, which means that we have to roll for attrition on those forts. So hopefully I don't lose this work that I just did. Let's try this fort first. Hopefully I don't roll a six. I totally rolled a six, bummer. All right, so this is gonna go back to level one, but that's okay. And then for this one, I rolled a three, it just stays there. So this fort I, that I just fortified, fortified, ha, um, got reduced back to level one, but at least it's still there. There are worse things in this world. Okay, so I've discarded down to nothing. I did my fort upkeep. All right, there are no temporary truces to remove. Um, there are no off-map conflicts to deduct IP for, thank goodness. Everybody's north of the Danube, and yeah, we just advanced the year by one, so now we're in the year 172. We're going to come back to the spring. Now it'll be a barbarian turn again. And we are going to stop here in the interest of time, but that, my friends, is the Wars of Marcus Aurelius. I've been having a fantastic time with this game. I think it is definitely a keeper for me in my solo collection, and I hope that this video helped you see why you might enjoy it too. Happy gaming!